Hey everybody, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. We got lots to discuss, the SEC versus Ripple, also some big news behind Bitcoin. Before we go further, please go ahead, hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment below, and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, quick heads up, I uploaded my interview with Rick Edelman earlier today. You don't want to miss that interview. We talk about many different topics, including the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit. So please check out that interview. Rick is, of course, a legendary Wall Street advisor, so you don't want to miss that one. So guys, let's jump into it. So the initial hearing between the SEC versus Ripple is on February 22nd, 2021. So we got a couple months to wait here. And this data was found on the Pacer Monitor website for court case information. Shout out to Jack the Rippler who, uh, excuse me, Jack the Ripple who found that. And here on the website, uh, you can see the respective confirmation of that date. And uh, it's interesting. We'll have to wait and see how this plays out. But it says here, in accordance, uh, well, let me read the whole thing for you. Counsel for all parties are directed to appear for an initial pre-trial conference in accordance with Rule 16 of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure at 10 a.m. on February 22nd, 2021, to be held telephonically. So they're going to do it over phone calls, and they have the numbers on here. So don't call the numbers, guys. Let's let this play out. But um, obviously, I'm still holding my XRP. That's based on my own research, not uh, on anyone's opinion. You do what's best for you. Obviously, XRP will continue to fall in value. Um, you can look at it. It's down 50% for over the past seven days. But as I've stated, it's going to be messy in the short term, but fine in the long term. And of course, Stuart Alderati, Ripple's general counsel, continues to weigh in on this. He tweeted the following today. While we have preferred to achieve regulatory clarity through thoughtful real rulemaking or legislation, it's now up to the courts, not Twitter hot takes. What hasn't changed is our steadfast commitment to the constructive regulatory engagement. Uh, he continues here saying, in the last week or so, the SEC chair six of his division directors, the SEC's chief economist, and the general counsel have all departed. Remember when I said Jay Clayton is an asshole and there's something fishy here? The fact that this guy's out and all his respective people, that is so strange. And he does this the last week, right? He drops his bomb on Ripple on the last uh, last week of his uh, tenure. And it's kind of like a punch in the face, right? Uh, well, Stuart continue saying we look forward to working with all the commissioners and the sec's new leadership once appointed in 2021 so as i've been stating in my videos one of the things we can hope for is that eli rosman who will be the new chairman would possibly help this thing get fast track kick it out or something i don't know right it's a possibility how likely it is i don't know guys but this is the situation we're in, and, and like I said, it's going to be messy. And what I have been trying to do, by the way, guys, I'm in contact with Ripple and Brad Garlinghouse. I'm trying to set up an interview. Many of you who follow me on Twitter would um, know that, where I tweeted at him and Stuart Alderati and asking for an interview, saying, hey, look, uh, guys, I know there's not much you can talk about here, but let's speak to the community let's let's talk about it right and what the plan is moving forward so brad did re reach out to me or i reached out to brad and he responded i am in contact with ripple's press team trying to make this happen i'm hoping it happens so it's not confirmed yet but uh, i'm trying to get this going guys to so we can hear directly from brad and you know i'll ask all the respective questions of where do we stand what's the timeline for this what are the options Ripple is weighing? You know, what are the outcomes of security versus non-security? And how do we move forward if XRP is declared a security? And likewise, how do we move forward if it's not declared a security, right? What happens next? So I will be asking him all those questions. Once again, not confirmed, but I am in contact and uh, we'll see what we can do. Hopefully we can get something set up next week. I don't know. Uh, this week, obviously, we got some holidays and New Year's and, and all of that. So... We'll let you guys know as soon as I have it locked in so we can uh, I can get your questions and all of that and get it all prepared. So uh, these this Ripple versus X, SEC is getting a lot of 
press coverage. That's a good thing, by the way, especially um, it's going to get the crypto market a lot of visibility, but of course, Ripple a lot, a lot of visibility. And if they, you know, depending on the outcome, um, this is really going to set the precedence for the how we test 2.0 and what, you know, how the SEC wants to treat crypto assets, digital assets moving forward. And uh, of course, Ripple is, to is talking about how this lawsuit harmed all, of, all of the XRP holders, right? So um, let's see if this paints the SEC in a light where they feel the pressure of, okay, we screwed up. We didn't say anything for seven, eight years. And on the way out, Jay Clayton sucker punches Ripple and then he's gone and all his cronies are gone, right? This, this is just uh, really weird. And, uh, you know, the thing is, these guys doing it now, Jay Clayton, it's going to be on the Internet. Everybody's going to know these videos, these articles, all these things are going to be around. So it's not going to be good for his reputation. And here we see Bittrex, another exchange, will be pausing XRP uh, trading on Friday, January 15th at 4 p.m. PST. We heard from Coinbase yesterday and OK Coin as well. So not surprising, right, guys? We knew this was going to happen. All right, switching gears, this is very bullish news for the crypto market as well as Bitcoin, right? Or Bitcoin and the crypto market, I should say. Panthers' Russell Okung becomes first NFL player to be paid in Bitcoin. Many of you know Russ. He uh, is always talking about Bitcoin, right? And, and he's certainly a believer in the crypto market. So that's not necessarily new, but the fact that he's getting paid in Bitcoin and this is getting big time coverage and i'll show you the examples is very good guys we've talked about the influencers the celebrities all these folks who have millions of followers talking about bitcoin talking about their investing in bitcoin and uh this is great to see so pay me in bitcoin has come true for national football league player russell okung some 20 months and a 273 price percentage price increase uh, after he first tweeted that demand in May 2019, Okung will be the first player from any major U.S. sports league to be paid in Bitcoin. And you want to know something? He's not going to be the last. More folks are going to come. We've talked about Spencer Dimwitty, who plays on the Brooklyn Nets in the NBA. Um, he's a big Bitcoin advocate, and I'm sure he would want to do something like this. And look at this. Bleacher Report, which has 9.3 million fans talking about it, right? This guy's going to get paid half his contract of his $13 million contract in Bitcoin. Very bullish. Um, Russ also tweeted at Stephen A. Smith of ESPN, who has 5.2 million followers. Very well known in the sports talk radio TV uh, world. And it's just getting so much visibility. And uh, even Ian Rappaport, who has 2.4 million followers, tweeted about this. So, guys, very, very big, um, and I'm very bullish on it. And, of course, Anthony Pompliano uh, tweeted about it, and uh, it's making the round. So, very bullish news. Remember, this is about awareness, visibility, right, and how this is going to spread into uh, conversations and water cooler talk and just the social aspect of and social media and social aspect of our lives, right, that's how it starts. It starts seeping into people's subconscious and they become more familiar with it and they learn about it and they trust it and then they invest in it. And remember, we are very early and as these billionaires and all these hedge fund managers go on TV saying, we're buying Bitcoin, we're buying crypto, you're going to see mass FOMO kick in. Uh, and I think it's going to happen next year, guys, um, as, as Bitcoin and the crypto market continues to go up. Now, we got some details about Anthony Scaramucci's SkyBridge, which we've talked about. He went on TV saying, hey, we're starting a, to invest in Bitcoin. Well, they've invested $182 million into Bitcoin, according to uh, DEC here. And this is reported by The Block. And uh, DEC says the firm has invested more than $25 million for a new Bitcoin investment fund that, would, that went live in December. Um and uh, this is very bullish, just the tip of the iceberg. So everybody's jumping in at this point, right? You're just seeing uh, just random, or I shouldn't say random, but just the traditional financial players, your Jeffries, your Guggenheim Fund, your Mass Mutual, your Skybridges, right? 
They're just coming out of the woodwork and putting money into Bitcoin. And all of those millions will add up to billions, guys. And this crypto asset class will take off and skyrocket. New all-time highs are coming. Uh, that is why I'm holding Bitcoin in my portfolio. I have Ethereum in my portfolio. Obviously, XRP I told you guys about. I've got Cardano. I've got Chainlink. Chainlink has made me a lot of money this year. Um, and I think it still has some room to go up. And uh, definitely going to get some profits there. Got some Stellar as well. So I'm diversified. My largest holding is XRP, as I've disclosed. And those of you who are channel members have direct access to that link. Um, and... I have Ethereum and I have Bitcoin. You know, those three are my, well, my top three and they make up the majority of my portfolio. So, um, you know, while XRP not doing well in the short term, I do believe long term after this whole SEC Ripple lawsuit is over with will perform well. Um, but Bitcoin and Ethereum are carrying my portfolio right now. Obviously, Bitcoin. I mean, my goodness, we could see a $30,000 Bitcoin. Who knows by the end of this week, right? Um, we'll have to wait and see. We've seen Bitcoin do some thousand dollar price jumps, you know, in a, from a daily standpoint. But um, if it doesn't happen by the end of December, I'm certain it's going to happen in January, guys. And remember, the stock to flow model, we are on track to one hundred thousand dollars. Now, as always, I keep it balanced with you guys. That is not a certainty, right? That is a probability. So we shall see. But with the likes of Wall Street hedge fund money coming in, companies like MicroStrategy putting Bitcoin on their balance sheets. I think he can do it, especially with Michael Saylor talking to Elon Musk. And we, we you know, we did a video on that going through it. Uh, excuse me. Michael Saylor has said that uh, he expects Apple and and, and uh, Google to come with their respective uh, cash reserves, billions in cash reserves. And by the way, I do have an interview lined up with Michael Saylor in January. So stay tuned for that. If, of course, you have questions, leave them in the comment section. So I'm, I'm going to talk to him about it. You know, who, which companies, how did the conversation with Elon Musk go, so on and so forth. So a lot of bullish activity happening in the market. Um, I hope you guys see the facts right before our face here. Um, I, I think news like this with Russell Okung, the first sports um player to to do this uh to get paid in bitcoin is so significant and the coverage it's getting is very very bullish so guys what do you think about this news um leave your thoughts and comments below hit the thumbs up button share this video to a crypto skeptic and uh i will talk to you guys later